What an amazing day today. The SPY made new all-time highs while continuing to hug this upper level of resistance. The NASDAQ made new all-time highs, ended up closing green for the day. Bitcoin looks extremely bullish. And Ethereum finally crossed above. Very important level of resistance. So without further ado, let's get right into it. By the way, I posted my options day trades live on Twitter and I went nine for 10 for today. Um, I've been posting them since last week. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and follow at Hamid Trades. And also, if you guys like the video, go ahead and like, um, subscribe to the channel and put on your bell notifications. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Just look how much time has passed since we, you know, really looked at the bottom on the spy and called it here when it was trading outside of the lower level of the B band. Um, this is spectacular. <laughs> we made such an enormous, ridiculous move all the way from 414 to today, 434, which is just amazing in the past few weeks. Um, the SPY is just continuing to break through and continue on um, upward. The MACD looks extremely bullish. The RSI looks extremely, you know, it's starting to get overbought. But this this move is just... There looks like there could be more strength to potentially cross above um, this important level of resistance here that we see, which was uh, the support ranging back all the way from the bottom of the uh, March 2020 crash. So that's the level of resistance that we're at currently. For tomorrow, that level is going to be approximately 434.75. So 434.75 needs to break tomorrow as a resistance. For us to allow, for us to be allowed to continue trading above this level um, that we've been, you know, trading all throughout these past few months. So we need to see <clears throat> how the spy responds to that level, uh, continuing on forward. But this is extreme strength, and especially, you know, the fact that the spy continued on higher when the IWM broke goes to show how important and strong the nasdaq currently is right but for now let's talk about the iwm obviously yesterday we were looking at a very important level of support on the iwm at 224.09 which is the 38.2 percent fibonacci level we crashed down below that and then the next level of support was going to be the 50 percent fibonacci level that i talked about in yesterday's video at 220.87 so we didn't quite get there but we ended up touching 221.80 so this is a new very important level of support uh 220.87 and then below that is going to be 217.65 oh sorry it's going to be 218.11 so 220.87 and then 218.11 the level of resistance on the iwm is going to be 224.09 all right overall this looks very very bearish the reason being which we're going to talk about soon is um you know the bonds and how the dollar is moving currently but what is a good sign to an overextension to the downside is the fact that we are trading outside of the lower level of the bollinger band all right not necessarily the, like it doesn't automatically mean that we're going to bounce tomorrow we could potentially fall down lower tomorrow and then bounce into the end of the week but um we need to see how we respond around these two levels can we break back above 224 or are we going to break down below 220.87? Uh, the MACD is extremely, extremely oversold. The RSI fell sharply as well. We broke through support and we're outside of the lower level of the B band. So, most likely, you know, back here uh, in May, we also saw something very similar with the B band. We saw it break down below. And then the next day ended up falling even lower. Okay. So, we need to see if something like that happens for tomorrow which uh, potentially could, right? So, I mean, overall, the IWM fell because the 30-year yield and the NASDAQ were the leaders, all right? So as long as the, uh, you know, interest rates continue to be stable around these levels, then the IWM, which is the financial sector, and uh, economically sensitive stocks in the IWM, the Russell 2000, will not do well. And the NASDAQ will continue to lead. All right. So um, that's essentially it for the SPY and the IWM. Now let's talk about the NASDAQ and the overall bonds and the dollar. 
All right, so the Nasdaq clearly had an amazing day. We ended up closing yesterday at 360.19, and we ended up opening today at 362.45. So we opened up over $2 higher. So we, oh, <laughs> we broke out and opened at a new all-time high while being extremely overextended on the RSI, while being in a sharp uptrend, and while the MACD just barely continued to move on upward, which is just absolutely ridiculous strength. You know, like, the, uh, the MACD, like, barely moved. Otherwise, like, any other stock, something like this, that would have happened, the MACD should have been, like, all the way up here. But the fact that we barely even made, like, a movement in the MACD shows that the strength in this move can continue on upward. So that's the only thing. This movement can continue moving. <laughs> like the, the movement on the uh, NASDAQ can continue on upward. Um, one thing to look for is that we did open up outside of the upper level of the B band and then we returned a bit um, lower. But regardless, this isn't a, a means of, um, this isn't a reason to become bearish. The one time that I would start to look to become short is if we cross below this uh up uh you know this uptrend line that we've been um creating since uh may 19th so the nasdaq had an amazing day because <laughs> the 30-year yield um went parabolic so these past few days the 30-year yield you know we needed to see it break above uh 163 i said we can end up touching 164 and today we had a high of 163.26 so let's see tomorrow if there is more room to go on the 30 year yield or will we consolidate a bit create a bull flag and then continue on higher um right now you can see that the macd is now much more overbought so you can see for example here the macd moved much more sharply um whereas the macd on the queues didn't move as sharply in conjunction with this movement all right so you can see that uh this movement on the 30-year yield the macd moved very sharply upward which means that there's less potential room to the upside okay because we opened and closed well beyond the upper level of the b band so that is an alarming signal a bit uh we need to see if it can if it can sustain these levels above 162 for the uh, 30 year yield if not then we can retrace back all the way down to this uh, blue trend line which would create a sell-off in the nasdaq and potentially break uh this uptrend line all right so that's the 30 year yield we need to see how it responds to this sharp movement to the upside now the 10 year yield obviously this so when the 10 year yield goes down it's also good for the nasdaq but if the 10-year yield goes up, then that is bad for the NASDAQ. So the fact that the 10-year yield is also extremely oversold, the MACD is extremely oversold, the RSI is getting almost oversold. This looks very similar to uh, the IWM, right? Oversold on the MACD, oversold outside of the lower level of the B-band, almost oversold on the RSI. So does this mean that the 10-year yield can uh find a bottom potentially and then continue on higher if that were the case then that would mean that the 30-year yield would also need to take a break a bit and money would funnel into the iwm and out of the nasdaq all right so just keep your eyes on all of those different things now i also want to look at the dollar so the dollar is also very very important so if the dollar and the 30-year yield are doing well then the nasdaq is going to do well but if the dollar and the 10-year yield are doing well then the iwm will do well okay so the dollar is continuing to break new highs we're still we are still oversold on the macd but yet we are making new highs on the dollar which is extremely extremely bullish all right uh we are a little bit overbought on the rsi but regardless, this isn't a huge warning signal because also we still have a lot more room to go to get to the upper level of the B-band. So we aren't really even overextended on that, um, you know, in that respect as well. Also, you can see, you know, there is a lot more room to go higher on the dollar. 
So um, this doesn't necessarily mean, you know, oh my god, there's a top on the dollar. There's still a lot more potential room to go to the upside. So we just have to continue watching how the dollar responds here. All right. Crude oil fell sharply today. Uh, it bounced perfectly to the 38.2% Fib level that I drew out yesterday to 71.09. It fell to a low of 71.07. So that level held pretty well. So now we need to continue seeing if that level can hold. If that breaks, then we are going to potentially retest the 50% Fib level at 69.27. So we need to see... Also, you can see that the MACD is now very oversold. So we need to see whether we can find support here or here. And then whether crude oil can consolidate and then we can break above these levels of resistance and continue one higher and uh, create a bull flag. All right. So we just need to continue monitoring crude oil uh, day to day. So the crypto markets look very, very bullish now. The reason being is because Ethereum crossed above these two very important levels of resistance that we've been monitoring for quite some time, the 2341 level and the 2316 level. So currently you can see that it is trading above that level. We still have three hours to go before the, um, you know, the candle closes. But if it closes above 2341, if the daily candle closes above that level, that is going to be very, very bullish for Bitcoin and uh, altcoins in general, because that would mean that also you can see that there is a perfect uptrend on Ethereum. Um, and we are holding that level. So now we could also look at this level on Ethereum as well. Um, otherwise, we just really need to hold 2316 as support. You can see that the MACD is pointed downward. Yet Ethereum is breaking above resistance. So that is extremely bullish on Ethereum's MACD. This looks like um, negative divergence, uh, positive divergence. So this looks very, very, very bullish. Uh, you can also see that the RSI barely really moved upward, which is another very bullish sign. So now when you look at Bitcoin, look at how beautiful Bitcoin looks <laughs> compared to, you know, Ethereum. Like this is a very, very bullish setup. You can see another beautiful uptrend here. Um, and Bitcoin is holding that lower level of the uptrend perfectly. And it was today in conjunction with the 38.2% Fib level. All right. Also, the MACD on Bitcoin is about to cross down below, yet Bitcoin is continuing on higher. So that is extremely bullish on Bitcoin. Um, you can see that the 35,080 level is still acting as resistance currently. So that needs to break. But, you know, the main key level that needs to break is this green trend line here. Uh, we can see a bull flag on uh, Bitcoin right here. Um, so then essentially a break of this upper level of the flag can continue sending this upward. So we just need to continue monitoring it. Otherwise, overall, this is a very, very bullish sign for crypto. But we need to see whether or not we can sustain these levels. All right. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there's um, anything you guys want to know, please drop a comment. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Drop a like, comment, subscribe, and have an amazing day. I'll see you guys tomorrow.